Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Artist First World Radio Network, home of the best new music you've never heard and home of the best new talk shows you need to hear. Please don't forget to visit our archives page at www.artistfirst.com where you can hear all our past shows for free and on demand. You are tuning in to High School Football America. This show airs at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time every Thursday. For more information about this show and to listen to past shows, please visit artistfirst.com slash Jeff Fisher. And now here's your host of High School Football America, Jeff Fisher. Thank you very much, Corey, and good evening, high school football fans from around America. Welcome to High School Football America. This is October the 6th, and it's just been a perfect week weather-wise here in Chicago, so very happy tonight. You can't beat it when you're in October and you've got uh, temperatures around 80 degrees. We've got a really good show lined up for you tonight. Going to start in Texas with a young man who uh, last week set a new passing record in the Lone Star State. Dylan Sheffield is a senior quarterback at Wichita Falls High School. Last week threw for 683 yards and seven touchdowns. And Dylan will join us at uh, the top of the show coming up in about uh, four minutes. Then we'll head to Ohio to talk with uh, Rick Finati, head football coach at St. Edward in Lakewood. Finati and his Eagles ranked number nine this week by Max Preps. And on Saturday, traveling east to play number one Don Bosco Prep. St. Edwards on a 21-game win streak. Bosco Prep, they are on a 39-game win streak. So that is a big collision. Game going to be played at Fordham University in the Bronx. And then around 40 minutes past the hour, going to head to Kansas to talk about another record-breaking quarterback. I'll talk with Sunrise Christian Academy head coach Trey Hall about his junior quarterback, Zach Howell, who uh, almost last week for the second time this season established a new single-game passing yards record. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. Plus, uh, plenty of news from around the country on this edition of High School Football America. You can catch it all right here. Plenty of games tonight, so don't forget to uh, check out HighSchoolFootballAmerica.com for all the scores from around the country, not only tonight, but tomorrow and uh, throughout the weekend on Saturday. You can follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Go to the website, click on the icons at the top of the page. Again, it's HighSchoolFootballAmerica.com. Otherwise, if you like to search things, the handle for Twitter is HSFBAmerica. And if you have uh, any comments during the show, please feel free to contact us on our Facebook page. Just search High School Football America. I want to thank our sponsors this evening. As always, Blitz Group doing a great job throughout the week of getting the word out on who we have on the show. So if you want to learn more about uh, this uh, boutique media company, go to BlitzGroupLLC.com. The High School Rudy Awards nominations are now open, and uh, this is just a great program. We had Byron Jensen on, one of the awards directors, a couple of weeks ago. but uh, uh, And we're going to actually going to have one of the nominees on next week. I just thought about that. But anyway, the uh, Rudy Awards, uh, the High School Rudy Awards, they uh, characterize the four C's which is character, courage, contribution, and commitment. Go to highschoolrudyawards.com to learn how to nominate a player. Next week we will talk with uh, the head coach at uh, Theodore Roosevelt High School in Ohio. His name is John Nemec, who has uh, actually nominated his player. His name is Ryan Anderson, and, and Ryan is battling cancer right now. He was one of the top 25 uh, football players in Ohio prior to uh, the, the start of this season, diagnosed with a rare bone cancer that has uh, taken him away from the sport forever, but uh, Ryan and Coach Nemec will join us next week, so tune in for that. And then uh, also want to thank our sponsor tonight, the National High School Coaches Association. They've got a great mission of helping uh, you know, with leadership and, and supporting coaches, administrators, and programs throughout the country. Uh, to learn more and, and, and to become a member, just go to the website at nhsca.com. And if you'd like a uh, media kit to learn about being a sponsor on the show, just email me at jeff at highschoolfootball.com. America.com. All right, we are set to kick off in Texas when we come back. High School Football America heads to Wichita Falls to talk with the Coyote quarterback, Dylan Sheffield, who's the new single game passing yards record holder in Texas. This is High School Football America, and this is the Artist First Radio Network. You've heard of being named All Conference, but only one organization has earned the classification of being All World. The United States Navy. Whether it's humanitarian efforts, fighting terrorism, or protecting America's freedoms, the Navy is the team that helps us all win big. To learn how you can make it to the big league, call 1-800-USA-NAVY or visit Navy.com. Navy. Accelerate your life. 
If you don't clean up your room, the Board of Health is going to condemn it. The Board of Health doesn't even know about your room. What's more, they don't care. You know, if you keep making that face, it's going to freeze that way. Not unless you're someplace really, really cold. Actually, a lot of the warnings moms hand out are exaggerated. If you don't get your blood pressure checked, you could have high blood pressure, not even know it, and you could die from a stroke. But she's right about that one. Call the American Heart Association or visit our website to learn more. The hottest technology in the world isn't being developed in Silicon Valley. In the United States Navy, more top secret technologies are being created than ever before. Incredible machines made of stealth materials that fly by themselves. The only problem with these incredible technologies it's a shame the enemy can't see them. To learn more, call 1-800-USA-NAVY or visit Navy.com. Navy. Accelerate your life. The Navy Seahawk helicopter has a lift capacity of over 6,000 pounds. But when it comes to helping those around the world who need it most, they lift the hopes of millions. To learn more about how the Navy is the best place to do great things, call 1-800-USA-NAVY or visit Navy.com. It will do you and the world a load of good. Navy. Accelerate your life. The major record labels say that downloading music from the Internet is stealing, stealing, stealing. But according to these people, making a mixtape for your friend is stealing, too. So is making a tape of a radio show. Hello, radio. We play the songs that sound more like everyone else than anyone else. When a rock band plays an ACDC cover at a bar that doesn't pay ASCAP, that's stealing. Or have you ever sung happy birthday to your friend at a restaurant? Warning! Warning! Happy birthday is copyrighted, so if you're singing in a public place, you'd better be paying royalties, or you'll be stealing music. Manda! Does all this stuff about stealing music sound absurd? Would you rather have a world where our music culture wasn't the intellectual property of five corporations? Then stop giving them your money, and make sure your friends and family don't either. Better yet, try burning them a CD. Ah! If we pull the plug on major labels, music gets better. Find out more about what you can do. Check out downhillbattle.org. And now back to High School Football America with your host, Jeff Fisher. Thank you very much, Corey. Big show for you tonight. Uh, a little bit later, we're going to talk with Rick Fanati, the head coach at uh, St. Edward in Ohio, number nine in the nation, taking on number one Don Bosco Prep Saturday in New York City. Plus, uh, a little bit later, we'll head north to Alaska, take a look at the uh, first state to hit the postseason. And also, question for you tonight. Uh, do you know which NBA star went back and practiced with his high school football team this week? You might be surprised who it was. This is a big name. <laughs> I'll give you a hint. His nickname is uh, King, and we'll leave it at that. Uh, now let's get on to our first guest, Dylan Sheffield. He's a senior quarterback at Wichita Falls High School in Texas. And last Friday, Dylan had a great game, throwing for a state record 683 yards and a 53-49 win over Denton. Uh, oh, by the way, he also threw seven touchdown passes. And Dylan's here now to, to talk a little bit about that huge game. Good evening, Dylan, and welcome to the show. Hey, man, thanks for having me. Uh, absolutely. I, I When I saw the number pop up, uh, I think it was Saturday, I was, I was checking out Max Preps, and I saw it, I said, oh, my gosh, that's got to be a record. I knew it wasn't the national one. So now when you hear that, that you have the record and the big number and you've had a week to digest it, what, what kind of comes to your mind? Uh, you got any thoughts on, on last Friday? Uh, last Friday was great and everything, but uh, we're trying to move on, and we're trying to we're in, right in the middle of this district race. We're trying to win it. And that's really the, the, the key to the whole thing. The old record, 634 yards. Uh, you were 35 of 50. Was there any point during the game where it kind of sunk in on you that this was a pretty special evening? Well, I knew we were doing good offensively and everything, but I really I didn't have a clue till after the game, till after I was told about it. Okay, well, uh, and we'll get to, to what's ahead for you right now, but we'll just kind of stick with the, the game that was. Uh, you know, the record didn't come until the end of the game. Your team behind to Denton, 49-46. Uh, you get the ball back, 54 seconds to go. Tell me a little bit about the atmosphere in the huddle when you, you took the field for that final drive. Uh, when we took the field, uh, our coach said, this is what we're made for, and everybody believed it. We all had confidence going into that drive. We knew that we were going to score. 
Okay, now you now, now here comes the big play. It's it's third down, and you hook up uh, with uh, Chance. I guess his last name is, is pronounced Gary. Is that the way it's pronounced? Gary. Yeah. Gary. Like okay. So so describe to our listeners, you know, what type of play was it, and what happened because it wasn't wasn't a small touchdown by any imagination. No, it was. It's actually a play that we really never ran. We've read it a few times, but it was just something in the coverage that the coaches saw on the sideline, and we ran it, and it worked perfectly. 81 yards later, uh, you know, and a new record. More importantly, that W that you're talking about. Uh, you know, what, what's been the best part of, of the record? I mean, you've gotten a, a lot of attention personally, and it also brings attention to the school. You have a, you have a favorite moment since last Friday of uh, what's happened to this media attention, aside from my interview tonight, of course. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, I think whenever I was at the, whenever I was at the Texas Rangers game, that was the best. Whenever they put my they put my name on the screen and announced it out, that was that was the best feeling so far. Yeah, that, that kind of puts you up there in, in legendary proportion. So let's let's talk a little bit about the season. I know you said you've got some goals to, to get to the postseason. Tell us a little bit about the progress of the offense this year throughout the season. Uh, two and four right now overall, one and one in district play. You've been averaging over 30 points a game. So, so where is the offense now as opposed to the beginning of the year? I mean, has it been a good progression? Yeah, uh, actually at the beginning of the year, in, inside of our football team, we didn't feel like our offense was doing that good wasn't doing that well. We had some things that we needed to sharpen up, and lately it just feels like it's rolling really good. Tell me a little bit about your relationships with your receivers. I know you put up 350 uh, yards the, the game before this uh, this record setter here. Tell me a little bit about uh, how hard you guys have worked in the off season and what you do during the season to keep your yourself sharp and keep improving. Well, it's the same. It's the same group from last year, just about, and. We worked all through off season together, just us. And then the big one was this summer we played probably close to 107 on seven games with each other, which was the big one. Wow. <laughs> That'll yeah. get you sharp. Yeah. We're, uh, we're talking with Dylan Sheffield tonight, senior quarterback at uh, Wichita Falls uh, High School in Texas, threw for a state record 683 yards and a win last Friday over uh, Denton 53-49. Um, now I did talk to your coach a little bit earlier this week, and he said that uh, you know your, your career has been a little tough. You, you've, you've had some injuries and that have uh, you know held you back at times where you didn't finish the season last year. So what have you learned about yourself and, and fighting through the adversity of injuries and then coming back to, to have a good senior season? Uh, I just, I, I'm just kind of hoping that I stay healthy. It's just one of those things that you never know. But if I stay healthy, it helped me realize that you never know when you can be taken off the field and never really to take advantage of it. Talk a little bit about uh, what's left of the season. You've got, uh, you know, four regular season games. I, I know, you know, one of the goals is going to be the playoffs. But what are, what are some of the other immediate goals that you guys need to achieve to, to make sure that the season doesn't end uh, on that 10th game? Uh, well, we're gonna, as a team, we're going to take each game one by one. And that's going to start with Little Elm this week. And, we had a great we had a great bye week. Sharpened some things up offensively. Did some good things defensively to fix some little things, some little detail stuff. So we're right on track. Tell me a little bit about. Uh, well, I talked to Garrick Dieter uh, earlier this year, and Garrick was the guy that set the uh, the yards receiving record out of Indiana. And he was kind of you know getting a few small looks recruiting wise, and boom, he pops the record, and all of a sudden you know a bunch of uh, recruiting offers come in. Anything like that happened since uh, since last Friday? Uh, I think there's been a couple of schools talking to Coach, but it, right now we just don't want any distractions with me or the team. Sure. Tell me a little bit about uh, life off the football field. What do you What do you like to do? Uh, what's it like to be a, a student at Wichita Falls High School? Uh, I love being a student here. The school's amazing. The community's good. Uh, it's good. It's a, it, there's great tradition at this school, and that's what I like being a part of. What, uh, what are some of the things you, you, you enjoy to do to kind of de-stress and, and not worry about football? A, a, any uh, hobbies or kind of things you do to, 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 to relax? Well, I mean, I, football takes up a big chunk of my life. Uh, I also play baseball during the spring, and I like to hang out with my friends some. But school and football are a big part of my life pretty much. Well, now I, I know one of your friends, we talked about this uh, the other day when we set the interview up, is your friend Jonathan Gray. So the, the two of you now both have set records. He set the touchdown record, the all-time record there for Texas. So, so tell me a little bit about what you guys chatted about this week. Did you kind of compare records? Uh, no, not really. He just kind of congratulated me. I congratulated him. Uh, we, were, we were just kind of acquaintances back whenever I went to elementary school there in North Crowley. So it wasn't really a long conversation. 
Well, like, like I said, both of you have done some big things this year. Um, you know, finally, what, what does the future hold for you here? You're a senior. I mean, uh, is college ball in, in the cards for you at this point? And, uh, you know, what, what, what do you hope to do down the road? Uh, yeah, I've always wanted to play college football. And uh, I think it's a great chance that I might stay healthy, keep winning, and keep producing on the field. Well, I just want to congratulate you. I mean, uh, you know, uh, anybody that goes to the top of the stack in the record book in Texas has, has got something that they can uh, smile uh, smile about and be proud of. So congratulations on last week and, and continued success the rest of the year, and hopefully you can get that goal of uh, going into the postseason. Thanks, Ben. Okay, take care. You too. That is Dylan Sheffield, the senior quarterback at Wichita Falls High School in Texas. Uh, state record 683 yards in the win last Friday. Uh, also threw seven touchdowns in that uh, in that game, and uh, just really something special. For those of you wondering, did he did he uh, you know break a national record? No, that uh, that record is uh, a little bit further away. He's about 80 yards away from uh, that. I think probably uh, to be exact, 81 yards. Uh, the uh, record is held by a kid out of California, David Corral of uh, Pacific Palisades. He set that national mark back in 2000. Going to take a break. When we come back, going to head to the Buckeye State. Talk about a big matchup Saturday in New York City where St. Edward will take on number one Don Bosco Prep. And, by the way, St. Ed, not no slouch at all. They are number nine, according to Max Preps. That and more when we come back. This is High School Football America on the Artist First Radio Network. You've heard of being named All-Conference, but only one organization has earned the classification of being All-World, the United States Navy. Whether it's humanitarian efforts, fighting terrorism, or protecting America's freedoms, the Navy is the team that helps us all win big. To learn how you can make it to the big league, call 1-800-USA-NAVY or visit Navy.com. Navy, accelerate your life. If you don't clean up your room, the Board of Health is going to condemn it. The Board of Health doesn't even know about your room. What's more, they don't care. You know, if you keep making that face, it's going to freeze that way. Not unless you're someplace really, really cold. Actually, a lot of the warnings moms hand out are exaggerated. If you don't get your blood pressure checked, you could have high blood pressure, not even know it, and you could die from a stroke. But she's right about that one. Call the American Heart Association or visit our website to learn more. The hottest technology in the world isn't being developed in Silicon Valley. In the United States Navy, more top-secret technologies are being created than ever before. Incredible machines made of stealth materials that fly by themselves. The only problem with these incredible technologies? It's a shame the enemy can't see them. To learn more, call 1-800-USA-NAVY or visit Navy.com. Navy. Accelerate your life. The Navy Seahawk helicopter has a lift capacity of over 6,000 pounds. But when it comes to helping those around the world who need it most, they lift the hopes of millions. To learn more about how the Navy is the best place to do great things, call 1-800-USA-NAVY or visit Navy.com. It will do you and the world a load of good. Navy. Accelerate your life. Major record labels say that downloading music from the internet is stealing, stealing, stealing. But according to these people, making a mixtape for your friend is stealing too. So is making a tape of a radio show. Radio. We play the songs that sound more like everyone else than anyone else. When a rock band plays an ACDC cover at a bar that doesn't pay ASCAP, that's stealing. Or have you ever sung happy birthday to your friend at a restaurant? Warning, warning. Happy birthday is copyrighted, so if you're singing in a public place, you'd better be paying royalties, or you'll be stealing music. Manda! Does all this stuff about stealing music sound absurd? Would you rather have a world where our music culture wasn't the intellectual property of five corporations? Then stop giving them your money, and make sure your friends and family don't either. Better yet, try burning them a CD. Ah! If we pull the plug on major labels, music gets better. Find out more about what you can do. Check out downhillbattle.org. And now back to High School Football America. 
Thank you very much, Corey. Uh, still waiting to get in touch here with uh, head coach Rick Fanati of St. Edward High School in Ohio, getting ready for their big matchup with Don Bosco Prep on Saturday. So while we're waiting for Coach to, to get on the line here, uh, stay with a little football news out of Ohio. And, and this one kind of caught everybody off guard in the Akron area on uh, on Tuesday. Uh, yeah, you know, the Cleveland Cavalier fans may still be upset with LeBron James for leaving the uh, the hometown state, but members of his alma mater football team, very, very happy that the NBA all-star well, has a little soft spot in his heart for his old team james who pretty good darn receiver uh, when he played at akron st vincent st mary returned to the high school gridiron on tuesday that's right that's what happens when you're on uh, on lockout or strike or whatever you want to call it he uh, he actually worked out with his team and the, the team this year in pretty good shape and that's why uh, the coach uh, brought him in to uh, try and inspire him right now uh, st vincent st mary is undefeated ranked number three in the latest division three associated press state rankings and uh, according to James on his Twitter account, he practiced in full pads. There was a uh, one picture that I saw from uh, Fox 8 in Cleveland that showed him there. He had a uh, one of the players who was the tallest on the team. I think he was 6'5". Uh, he, he was not practicing on Tuesday. So uh, King James uh, was able to wear his pads. And nobody was able to tackle him. I guess I could chuck him off the line a little bit. But uh, for those of you who don't know, LeBron James, uh, pretty darn good, as I said, as a, as a receiver in high school. Caught 27 touchdown passes during his career. Was a, an all-state player during his sophomore year. Led the school to the state semifinals in his junior year. But uh, didn't play as a senior for obvious reasons. Didn't want to suffer an injury that would have cost him those millions of dollars in the NBA. But, you know, many do believe that uh, had James decided to, to play football, he would have had a pretty good NFL career. After the workout on Tuesday, James tweeting on Twitter, uh, quoting this right now, uh, just got done practicing with St. V varsity team, full pads and all, felt great being back on the field. And then at the end he said, should I, with a question mark. So <laughs> don't know that he can do that, but it was so sure interesting. And uh, if you want to see more on this and actually see some video of LeBron James from his high school day, I, I put it up on um, the, uh, the high school uh, wire there, you can check out uh, the Ohio News, and it'll take you to links for video on that. I also actually found some video on another NBA All-Star, Allen Iverson. Uh, Iverson, a darn good high school football player. Back in 92, he led Bethel High School in Virginia to a Division Five state championship as a quarterback and defensive back. And I found some video from him, too. So, again, go to uh, the high school wire, click on Ohio News, and you'll be able to check out those uh, those video clips. Really very, very good. And uh, uh, last, before we try and hook up here with uh, Coach Finati, let's talk a little bit about what's going on in Alaska. Hey, 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 the postseason is here for the 2011 high school football season. Yep, the first one in is the first one out, and that's Alaska 2010. Uh, state champs are back in the playoffs up uh, in the uh, the state above the lower 48 and uh, at least one new champ this year because they've added a third classification called medium schools in the uh, big schools classification both of last year's finalists Anchorage West and Service are back however defending champ West a big hill to climb entering the playoffs four and four during the regular season Service on the other hand uh, quarterfinal game coming up on Saturday against Palmer it's uh, been a pretty good season for the Cougars, and if you may remember, we talked to uh, Jason Calderera, the head coach, earlier this year on High School Football America. We had talked to him right after their season opener in Hawaii when they uh, tied against uh, Lila Hula. <laughs> There's a tongue twister for you. Uh, they tied in that game, uh, but they've won seven straight since that time, and uh, if you want to check out that interview with uh, Jason Calderera, just go to artistfirst.com, click on High School Football America, and uh, you can check out that August the 18th show. And speaking of guys that we've had on the show, we had Brian Argo, Igo, excuse me, the head coach at Barrow, the only school above the Arctic Circle. He was actually in our inaugural show back on July 21st. Well, he and his Whalers did a pretty good job. Six and one season, and they are in uh, in the semifinals of the small schools category. And we'll talk about who they'll play in a second. But if you want to listen to those uh, interviews with uh, him and Brian Houston, his assistant, who's been there for the entire six years of the program, just go uh, back to the archives and check it out. So if you want to look at things, uh, in the large quarterfinals, the game's on Saturday. Palmer at service, West at Wasilla, West Valley is at Anchorage South, and uh, Anchorage East is at Juno Douglas. Juno Douglas 7 and 1 coming in. Now, in the medium schools uh, semifinals, uh, Kenai and Soldatna will play. Now, those two schools have combined for the last nine state championships on the small school side, but uh, again, Soldatna, the Stars, will not try to defend the small schools because they're in the medium category right now. 
but uh, pretty good run between Kenai and Soldatna, but it's going to you know, only come to an end if uh, Soldatna cannot get to the championship game and win it there, 8-0, Kenai 4-4. The other semifinal matchup, which will be played on Friday, is Homer 7-1 against Thunder Mountain. On the small school side, Barrow, which we just talked about with Brad Igo, they are 6-1 and one playing a home game on Saturday against Monroe 5-3, and three, and Eilson will play uh, Nikiski 7-1 and one on Saturday. So those are the matchups if you want to check out. Uh, everything that's going on in Alaska during the postseason, just go to highschoolfootballamerica.com, click on the high school wire, and then go to Alaska News, and we'll have all the information for you there. Going to take a break. When we come back, going to try and hook up with uh, Rick Finati, the head football coach at St. Edward in Ohio, talking about their matchup with Don Bosco Prep coming up on Saturday. That and more when High School America, High School Football America, comes right back. You've heard of being named all-conference, but only one organization has earned the classification of being all-world, the United States Navy. Whether it's humanitarian efforts, fighting terrorism, or protecting America's freedoms, the Navy is the team that helps us all win big. To learn how you can make it to the big league, call 1-800-USA-NAVY or visit Navy.com. Navy, accelerate your life. If you don't clean up your room, the Board of Health is going to condemn it. The Board of Health doesn't even know about your room. What's more, they don't care. You know, if you keep making that face, it's going to freeze that way. Not unless you're someplace really, really cold. Actually, a lot of the warnings moms hand out are exaggerated. If you don't get your blood pressure checked, you could have high blood pressure, not even know it, and you could die from a stroke. But she's right about that one. Call the American Heart Association or visit our website to learn more. The hottest technology in the world isn't being developed in Silicon Valley. In the United States Navy, more top-secret technologies are being created than ever before. Incredible machines made of stealth materials that fly by themselves. The only problem with these incredible technologies? It's a shame the enemy can't see them. To learn more, call 1-800-USA-NAVY or visit Navy.com. Navy. Accelerate your life. The Navy Seahawk helicopter has a lift capacity of over 6,000 pounds. But when it comes to helping those around the world who need it most, they lift the hopes of millions. To learn more about how the Navy is the best place to do great things, call 1-800-USA-NAVY or visit Navy.com. It will do you and the world a load of good. Navy. Accelerate your life. Major record labels say that downloading music from the internet is stealing, stealing, stealing. But according to these people, making a mixtape for your friend is stealing too. So is making a tape of a radio show. Radio. We play the songs that sound more like everyone else than anyone else. When a rock band plays an ACDC cover at a bar that doesn't pay ASCAP, that's stealing. Or have you ever sung happy birthday to your friend at a restaurant? Warning, warning. Happy birthday is copyrighted, so if you're singing in a public place, you'd better be paying royalties, or you'll be stealing music. Man down! Does all this stuff about stealing music sound absurd? Would you rather have a world where our music culture wasn't the intellectual property of five corporations? Then stop giving them your money, and make sure your friends and family don't either. Better yet, try burning them a CD. <laughs> If we pull the plug on major labels, music gets better. Find out more about what you can do. Check out downhillbattle.org. High school football fans, the 2011 season is just around the corner, and so is America's premier high school football show. Hi, I'm Jeff Fisher. Join me every Thursday night at 7 p.m. starting July 21st on the Artist First Radio Network for High School Football America. I'll talk with the top coaches and players, plus preview the top games from around the country. High School Football America is your ticket to all that is high school football. Tune in every Thursday at 7 o'clock for High School Football America beginning July 21st. we help prepare our kids for the future? Hi, this is Martina McBride. These days, our children face challenges unimaginable to us just a generation ago. We adults need to help our kids find something in school that really sparks their interest and keeps them involved. 
If that something happens to be music, the child will benefit in so many ways. Playing music in school is a great way to make new friends. Studies are showing that kids involved in school music are less likely to get into trouble. And kids who studied music tend to find science and math concepts easier to grasp. They even score higher on the SAT. It has to do with the development of something called spatial IQ. So get your kids involved with school music. It's a great way to help prepare them for life. A PSA brought to you by MENC, the National Association for Music Education, Gibson Guitar, Baldwin Piano, and this station. March is Music in Our Schools Month. Music, part of a sound education. You've heard of being named All-Conference, but only one organization has earned the classification of being All-World, the United States Navy. Whether it's humanitarian efforts, fighting terrorism, or protecting America's freedoms, the Navy is the team that helps us all win big. To learn how you could make it to the big league, call 1-800-USA-NAVY or visit Navy.com. Navy, accelerate your life. If you don't clean up your room, the Board of Health is going to condemn it. The Board of Health doesn't even know about your room. What's more, they don't care. You know, if you keep making that face, it's going to freeze that way. Not unless you're someplace really, really cold. Actually, a lot of the warnings moms hand out are exaggerated. If you don't get your blood pressure checked, you could have high blood pressure, not even know it, and you could die from a stroke. But she's right about that one. Call the American Heart Association or visit our website to learn more. The hottest technology in the world isn't being developed in Silicon Valley. In the United States Navy, more top secret technologies are being created than ever before. Incredible machines made of stealth materials that fly by themselves. The only problem with these incredible technologies? It's a shame the enemy can't see them. To learn more, call 1-800-USA-NAVY or visit Navy.com. Navy, accelerate your life. The Navy Seahawk helicopter has a lift capacity of over 6,000 pounds. But when it comes to helping those around the world who need it most, they lift the hopes of millions. To learn more about how the Navy is the best place to do great things, call 1-800-USA-NAVY or visit Navy.com. It will do you and the world a load of good. Navy, accelerate your life. Major record labels say that downloading music from the internet is stealing, stealing, stealing. And now back to High School Football America with your host, Jeff Fisher. Thank you very much, Corey. Uh, good show so far tonight. We talked to uh, Dylan Sheffield out of Wichita Falls, Texas, the uh, new leader in yards passing in a single game, 683 yards still to come on the show tonight. Trey Hall, head football coach at Sunrise Christian Academy, uh, talking about his record-setting junior quarterback who's put up almost 2,500 yards and 24 touchdowns through six games. But uh, now time to get to our spotlight interview in the huddle with uh, Rick Finale, the head coach at uh, St. Edward in Lakewood, Ohio. Rick taking over in 2009 and in three short years is built on the great tradition at the school. Uh, last year, the Eagles won Ohio's Division I title. They bring a 21-game win streak and a number nine ranking, according to Max Preps, into Saturday's big showdown with top-ranked Don Bosco Prep from New Jersey. Coach, welcome to the show to talk about the program and the big game. Hey, it's a pleasure. Yeah, well, having me on. Oh, absolutely. Uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a Pennsylvania guy, and, 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 and I'm one of those guys that likes the Buckeye State when it comes to high school football. <laughs> you, you've got some good stuff going on there. But uh, before we get into the big game, let's set the scene for the listeners. You know, it wasn't really all roses and championship tro trophies for you. You were hired late in May of 2009. You know, you struggled through that first year, four and six, and then uh, – Bang, last year, you know, perfect season, national champ, not a national champ, but a state championship. So what happened in that first year that kind of set the tone for last year and this year now? Well, I think the one thing was St. Edward has great tradition in athletics, and they've always had a very successful football program. But, but as of late, there were some things, outside influences and, and different things like that, that, that were keeping the program from, from uh, achieving the success that it, that it deserved. And, uh, you know, getting here the first year kind of assessed everything. We were four and six. We weren't a very uh, invested group. And, and a little bit about my philosophy, I'm a blue-collar type of guy. And, uh, 
It all starts with the offense and defensive lines, and, and therefore, if you're going to be successful in that area, you better be invested in the weight room, you know, and in the off-season program. And, and we weren't. We weren't at that point. You know, there wasn't a head coach in a program. And so when I got in, I had to finish my uh, contract at Mayfield High School, where it was a public school. So by the time that finished, it's, it's late June. And then you're getting rolling, and, and you're behind. When you play a group schedule like we do, you know, you can't afford to be behind the eight ball in terms of training and, and the off-season preparation. Yeah, now, but, you know, even with the, the, the late time getting in, you had to be so happy about the tradition there. Did you also have a, have a, a second where you said to myself, oh, boy, I'm in charge of one of Ohio's best programs? Yes. I think it was one of the times in, uh, after I got hired in May, and it's about 12 o'clock, and I'm by myself, and I'm looking around, and, uh, you know, next my office next to me is Greg Urbis, who's the uh, – you know, a famed Hall of Fame wrestling coach, and they've had 25 or so state championships. And, you know, and you kind of look at the, you, you know, you look around and you see all the success and the people that, you know, how, how, all the high achieving people in state championships, national championships, and you look at it like, man, it's it's time for me to, to, to get work in and, and start, you know, getting to the level that they are. And that meant <laughs> yeah. a lot to me. But then I'm yeah. also like, oh boy, it, it's going to be a lot of work. <laughs> yeah. Well, you talked about your cornerstone saying offensive and defensive lines, but I also read one article where you like putting your players in no-win situations during practice. I, I hear you like gassers, too. They're not out of the question. So tell me a little bit about that and, and how you run your practices. Yeah, the, the biggest thing for us is, you know, I take the old Lou Holtz phrase that we're going to get two hours of practice in if it takes us three and a half hours. So, you know, I have objectives that we, we want to hit practice so it all starts at you know where do we want to be at the end of this particular practice session or week or preparation and and then from there we you know we go backwards so like like tonight we were out there for about three hours or so and making sure that we have everything right you know our kids are going to be on a big bus bus trip that we haven't really taken a seven hour bus trip before for a football game when i school <laughs> kids so so we have some challenges in that regard but i look at it positively like it's a great opportunity for us to continue and strengthen our bonds as a team and be together for more than, you know, two days. Can remind us that when we go to summer camp in the summertime, we go to local colleges and spend three and a half days of three, three and a half hour practices a day. And it's just, uh, you know, it's intense. It's enduring. You have to be tough and, and believe in developing that mental edge. But, you know, when it comes to practice, we always try to put them in a situation where, where you know, it's, it's going to build – you know, continue being a man, you know, developing ownership and responsibility. And we just did it tonight in two minute drill, too. We're going to put the guys in situations with the backs against the wall, and they got to come out fight. They have to come out fight. And conditioning is a big part of it. We're fortunate they have a lot of guys go one way. You know, in that regard, that I've seen people, I've looked and visited schools all over, colleges, high schools that do that. You know, they don't condition maybe as much or. You know, they take for granted all the little things. And, and I look at it as a high school kid, that conditioning is more of a mental aspect, a mental part of the game. When you're running gassers and you're going the full length of the field and you have to hit it by a certain time, you got to hit your time or the whole team or your whole group's going to do another one. And you know, it all really makes that, that particular kid get out of that, you know, six seconds we say is for a play. Well, we want to get you three times that and go about, you know, 15 to 18 seconds and and really work your mind and, and your soul, and, and also work your, you know, work work your physical. Well, you just scared the heck out of me. I, I think I just had a flashback. I, it's been thirty <laughs> some years since I've been in the high school, but it, it, it just brought back that horrible feeling of, yeah, <laughs> you better make, right. better not make me run, buddy boy. You're you're my teammate. Get your butt <laughs> down the line there. But right. uh, be, before we get on to, to Bosco prep, let's let's talk about how last year. Uh, helped you and what you did during the preseason. Uh, again, lots of expectations on you guys. Obviously, perfect record, state title. Now, what did you do to make sure that the kids didn't kind of rest on the laurels, knowing, uh, again, the, the big schedule you had ahead of you? Well, I, I think the one thing was reminding them every day, you know, that uh, a lot of these guys, we had to replace 15 starters. And, you know, that was uh, all the skilled guys on offense and, you know, half of our offensive line and, and – you know, two of our defense alignment, two linebackers, and our entire secondary. So you start looking at that and adding things up. And, and I told the kids it was more of a situation where I, I wasn't so worried about them resting on their laurels. I wanted, I didn't want them to think, hey, you know, this, somebody else did this, and, and you know, am I going to be good enough to do it? And I just had to remind them, you guys are good enough, and 
We do a lot of a lot of work, and we go best on best in practice to kind of develop, you know, our work ethic and take the guys that are that are coming back as starters, going against the younger guys or the the new starters, and, and really working that. And everybody taking ownership and developing one another. And I just reminded them, you know, that last year, uh, you know. They did something in first in school history, win a football state championship. First in school history. I said, we won it last year. That was the prize. This year we, we got to defend it, you know, and, and uh, it's a new group. I'm not going to ever talk about another state championship to you. And we didn't talk state championship last year either. All we talked about was winning the day, being good today, having a great practice, and taking it one game at a time. And I think when you go 21 games in a row, you have to take that approach. You know, I know it's a cliche, one at a time, but – you know, our kids have lived it, and we've gotten some teams great effort, you know, going into this year where everybody is looking at us with a bullseye, and, you know, they're, they're defending somebody else's honor, what we won last year, and so far they've done that. Talking with Rick Finati tonight on High School Football America from St. Edward, taking on Don Bosco Prep on Saturday. You, you said you're a, a guy that loves those up-front guys, that whether it's offense or defense. I, I hear this uh, up-front offensive line is pretty darn good with some, some real studs up there. Let's tell the listeners a little bit about some of these kids and give them some props. Yeah, the big thing is, is our offensive line is, is uh, we're, we're very large. You probably average about 275 pounds. Uh, it all starts with our right side. Our, our right tackle is Kyle Kalis. He's a senior. He's about 6'5", 3'10". Uh, he's committed to Michigan. In my opinion, he's got to be one of the best tackles, if not the best tackle in the country. And our right guard is Tyler Orlowski. He's about 6'4", 290, and he's, gonna head, he's headed to West Virginia. And he's had multiple offers from Big Ten schools and different schools, but he's always liked West Virginia, and he was an early – Verbal commit to them, but he's staying there. And uh, our center is the smallest guy. He's Matt Henthorne. He's probably about 5'10", 240, but he's also probably pound for pound one of the strongest kids on the team. So he really he anchors our offensive line. And then our left side is our, our uh, new starter, so to speak. We have Joe Lachavo. He's about 6'3", 285 pounds. He started a couple games for us last year. He's doing a fine job for us. And our left tackle is Sean Connolly. He's a uh, 6'6", 300-pound uh, left tackle. So, you know, and, he, and he's big, and, and he had some big shoes to fill. Two of the boys that they had to replace, one's at Northwestern and one's at West Virginia himself. So, you know, they had some big shoes to replace, and, and they've worked hard every day, and, and uh, you know, they're doing a good job replacing Let's talk about the game on Saturday. You're going to need uh, every ounce of that muscle there. You talked about, you know, one of the challenges is getting on the bus and, and seven hours to New York City. The game going to be played at uh, Fordham University, the alma mater of Vince Lombardi, so you can kind of use that as a motivation, I guess. But what are, what are some of the, the challenges in playing this Don Bosco prep team that you've seen on film so far? So I think the one thing is they have skill offensively and defensively in their secondary you know, and they're, all, they're receivers and they're running backs. A lot of those guys go both ways. You know, the, the big challenge is, you know, is one when you see it on tape and then when you see them live. You know, that's going to be probably the best. That's the best secondary and probably the best skill players we have seen this year. So, you know, it's going to be adjusted to the speed and, you know, and some of the nuances of their game, uh, getting our boys a little bit acclimated and relaxed to it. Big thing. And, and like always, this team is tremendously coached. I mean, they do, they, they don't do, they have, they're not a team that makes a, a penalty that's going to hurt a drive. Uh, they don't throw interceptions. They don't fumble the ball. Uh, they pursue very well and play a great team defense. And their special teams is phenomenal. So, you know, we, we look at it as a, a mirror image. A lot of the stuff that our program, the philosophies that we have are, are built upon. You know, we, we see a lot of that, and that blue-collar approach in them, so we think it's going to be a, a really good match game. You know, the, both sides of the ball are always prepared. And, uh, you know, the, the, and the one thing is going to be the familiarity and getting used to one another and, and uh, picking that part of the game up. Yeah, well, I had uh, Coach Toll on uh, earlier this year, and uh, you both sound like you're cut from the same cloth. Uh, no, no nonsense. <laughs> Correct. Yeah, that's Let's- right. Let's, uh, let's wrap up here with, uh, I'm not quite sure who put together your schedule, but let's see, you got Penn Hills from Pittsburgh, uh, Jefferson from Tampa, then you got the in-state against Ursuline, you still have Moeller ahead, St. X from Cincy ahead, and then that little rivalry game against St. Ignatius. It would, did you lose your mind when you made the schedule? <laughs> 
Well, uh, a lot of things only being there three years, I, I guess you could say I was consumed in other things. You know, just <laughs> trying to get the 10-game 10 10 game schedule with Ohio and their the computer point system that we have and a lot of teams protecting themselves. Not really going out of that comfort level to, to play a team like St. Edward. You know, it was always difficult to find a game. So we're, we're, uh, we, we try to do our best. And, and uh, you know, we have an athletic director that works hard at trying to find these games. But, you know, sometimes I ask, uh, I ask the question myself. <laughs> I'm <laughs> doing it. I do it every Monday. You know, we play that. This game is the most important game. And then you come in Sunday and, all right, who do we got this week? Who, who's next? And it's always somebody very well coached. And, you know, and, and as our kids, it, it's, it's really a great life lesson. You know, every week it's about executing. It's about, you know, being accountable and working hard and preparation. And you can't be too high and you can't be too low. Well, yeah, I, there, there's definitely not one cupcake on that schedule, that's for sure. Oh. Cool. Coach, I really appreciate you taking the time tonight. I know you're, you're, you're heading out tomorrow to, uh, to New York City, and, and best of luck. I really appreciate you taking the time this evening. Appreciate it very much. Thanks for having me on. You're welcome. Have a, have a good game. Thank you. That is uh, St. Edward head coach Rick Finati. He is the defending Division I champ in Ohio, taking on national champion from 2009 and ranked number one this year, according to Max Preps, Don Bosco Prep. Great game on Saturday. Really uh, going to go a long way to figuring out uh, what that mythical national championship looks like. Going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to talk some more passing, just like we did at the top with uh, Dylan Sheffield. This time we're going to go to Kansas and talk with the head coach at Sunrise Christian Academy. His name is Trey Hall. That and more when we come back on High School Football America on the Artist First Radio Network. You've heard of being named All-Conference. But only one organization has earned the classification of being all world. The United States Navy. Whether it's humanitarian efforts, fighting terrorism, or protecting America's freedoms, the Navy is the team that helps us all win big. To learn how you could make it to the big league, call 1-800-USA-NAVY or visit Navy.com. Navy. Accelerate your life. If you don't clean up your room, the Board of Health is going to condemn it. The Board of Health doesn't even know about your room. What's more, they don't care. You know, if you keep making that face, it's going to freeze that way. Not unless you're someplace really, really cold. Actually, a lot of the warnings moms hand out are exaggerated. If you don't get your blood pressure checked, you could have high blood pressure, not even know it, and you could die from a stroke. But she's right about that one. Call the American Heart Association or visit our website to learn more. The hottest technology in the world isn't being developed in Silicon Valley. In the United States Navy, more top secret technologies are being created than ever before. Incredible machines made of stealth materials that fly by themselves. The only problem with these incredible technologies? It's a shame the enemy can't see them. To learn more, call 1-800-USA-NAVY or visit Navy.com. Navy, accelerate your life. And now back to High School Football America. Thank you very much, Corey. Jeff Fisher with you tonight. Uh, good show so far. We uh, had Rick Finati on just a few moments ago. Uh, that big showdown, St. Edward out of Ohio, taking on Don Bosco Prep from New Jersey. And at uh, top of the show, we talked with uh, Dylan Sheffield, who tossed for 683 yards, a new Texas State record last Friday. And we're going to keep in the, the motif of quarterbacks that can – air it out and uh, now we're going to head out to uh, to Kansas and talk with uh, the head coach of Sunrise Christian Academy his name is uh, Trey Hall who's going to talk about his guy out there uh, as a junior his name is Zach Howe welcome to the show coach thanks for having me today oh absolutely it was it was funny you kind of uh, hit me up on Twitter uh, earlier this week saying hey I got a guy that's tossing the ball around the yard pretty well and and I had actually just read about him on Max Prep so it's it's exciting to talk about him I know he's a a young man, but before we get into all his numbers, let's talk a little bit about uh, Sunrise Christian Academy. I, I wasn't aware of it until I saw the story, so let's tell the listeners a little bit about the school and where it's located. Okay, we're, we're a uh, 2A school in Wichita, Kansas. Um, we have, uh, in 9 through 11, we just went through a classification, we have 120 students, that's 9 through 11, and um, we play in a in a Christian conference called the Midwest Christian Athletic Conference. So we play teams 
in Oklahoma and Missouri that are like us, and uh, we also compete with some local schools here in the area. Now, just uh, last week you took on a, a team, I guess, that was a little bit bigger than you, according to story and Max Preps. And, and Zach, who is a junior, uh, saying what he's like, 161, 160, is that his, his actual size? Yeah, he's 6'1", uh, 165 is what we like to say. That's okay. with him fully clothed, shoes on, everything. <laughs> and depending what he's eating during the day. But uh, anyway, has a, has, a, has a huge game, which did not break the state record that he set back in September, but he completed 41 of 55 for 265 yards, eight touchdowns. So let's just kind of start with a thumbnail sketch of Zach. And, and I know he, he wasn't a quarterback last year. So tell me uh, about his evolution as a quarterback. Okay. Uh, he actually was our backup quarterback last year. He's played quarterback since he was in about the third grade. Um, but being at a small school, when you have an athlete of his caliber, you find ways to get him on the field. So he was a starting receiver and backup quarterback his ninth and his tenth grade year. Um, once our, our quarterback graduated, we knew that uh, our, our previous quarterback had the ability to run the ball very well. Um, Zach had the, ball, the ability, as you can see, to throw the ball. So we started breaking down defenses and learning to make the reads and, and where to throw the ball during, in each of the situations that we felt like we were going to face. And he's just a, a great student of the game and, and worked out all week, I mean, uh, all year preparing for this season. So uh, you can see his hard work's finally paying off. Now tell us how he fits into this offense. Is this a, your offense? Is it a wide-open attack? It is. It's, it's an air raid offense. Um, we like to we like to be an empty if if the defense will allow us. Um, we might have very rarely we have two back, but we're 100 percent shotgun um, and we're spread no huddle. We go off of wristbands, so we can make a, we can make the right call depending on what the defense gives us. If if they're going to play zone, we'll find the zone and sit. They want to play man, and we go to a lot of crossing routes and take some shots deep. He's uh, almost at uh, 2,500 yards. I think 24 touchdowns is what I read through through six games. So, so tell me a little bit about. Um, you said he's progressed really well, and he's a student of the game. But as, as a coach, I don't know that you can ever predict those sort of numbers, you know, in, in the preseason, unless you want to call yourself a genius. So, you know, at what point early in the season did you say, "Wow, I think Zach could have a great year." Well, this summer we competed in some seven-on-seven seven things with some local schools here, and being in, inside the city limits, the only schools that we were able to compete with in the seven-on-seven seven tournaments were five- and six-A schools here in the area. So um, when he was having success against those size schools, we knew that um, he could make all the different throws. Uh, he can throw the out from the left hash to the right uh, boundary. Um, he, can, he can throw it deep. He can uh, throw the bubble. Uh, he could throw the cross and route, so we knew he had the ability, but you're right. We never thought he would put up these kinds of uh, stats. Defenses aren't adjusting very well, um, and so he does a great job of uh, giving what the defense will give us. He, one thing that I really like to see with him is on uh, deep routes, he'll still have to check down on, on blitz coverages, so you know he's not afraid to throw it to his check down um, and, and make the right call every time. Tonight on High School Football America, talking with Trey Hall, uh, the head coach at Sunrise Christian Academy, talking about his uh, quarterback, uh, Zach Hall, a junior who's having a, a phenomenal season. So uh, you said it's, it's a wide-open attack, the air raid style. So ha have you put more and more into the offense as you've seen them be able to handle it? I mean, is it, is it now at the point where if, if, if somebody, you know, the defensive coordinator on the opposing team has to get ready for you, they're, they're, they're really starting to pop some aspirin? <laughs> yes, um, we – we do add some things every once in a while. We haven't had to here recently. Um, our defensive coordinator definitely doesn't like going against us. <laughs> so, um, and what we found, I'm actually from Alabama. I've only been up here about seven years. And uh, the double wing and power running is, is a lot more prevalent here in our area and the teams that we play. So I think that's an advantage to us that we're one of the few teams that, that does spread it out and definitely – one of the few that throw the ball 40 to 50 times a game. So tell me uh, a little bit about uh, the, the spotlight that is shining on your, your small school there. It's, it's got to be, be great. So what are, what are some of the, the things that uh, you've gotten out of this with his, his record breaker, and, and I guess that was September 2nd and now last week. So what, what has it done for the program? Oh, it's done wonders. We've got uh, 
our junior high numbers uh, for the program have, have increased. Um, we, they're already talking about, you know, wanting to be part of the program. Uh, you know, usually you lose some of those kids. It doesn't look like we're going to be losing any of them. Zach's doing a wonderful job of handling the, uh, the press that he's getting. Um, here in, in Wichita, we have one of the radio stations that nominated him as the player of the week, which was the first time at our school. Um, we actually had the play of the week this week on one of his on a 54-yard touchdown pass to a, one of his favorite targets, Bo Westerfield. Um, and, and the team's handling it well. He's he's making sure that any interview he has, he mentions how well the offensive line's blocking. And you know, when you throw the ball 55 times, you've got to have someone to catch it. And he's got seven to eight different targets he likes to throw to. He mentions them every time. So it's done well for the school. It's done, uh, Zach's done well handling it. And the team's actually been drawn together closer with, with the attention that we're getting. Well, that's great to hear. And the last question before I go, obviously you're small and maybe a lot of uh, recruiters didn't know about him, but, but this helps too. So what? A, a, any different calls that have come around since uh, the national spotlight shined on him from recruiters, from schools? We have had coaches that have asked for film. Um, and to be honest, once the, the, I've had two D1 coaches call. Once they hear how much he weighs, they do say, well, we'll keep in touch. If he gets to about 185, we really want to see some more from him. So he's got his work cut out. He knows that uh, he's got to eat right, work out, and put forth the effort to gain some weight. But he's definitely getting some looks from some colleges, and he's excited about it. Well, that, that's good to hear, and I'm glad you reached out to me and glad we were able to kind of introduce uh, your school there in, in Wichita to, uh, to the national audience, and, and best of luck the rest of the season. I sure appreciate it. You're welcome. That is uh, Trey Hall, the head coach at Sunrise Christian Academy, our uh, final interview here tonight on High School Football America. A great evening for uh, big-time quarterback numbers. We, we had uh, Dylan Sheffield on the show earlier from Wichita Falls, Texas. 683 yards, setting the uh, Texas single-game record. And then Zach Howell is, uh, is uh, Coach Hall's quarterback, and he set the Kansas record earlier this year and almost broke it. He came up 14 yards short in the game last week, uh, and they will uh, continue probably to put up numbers throughout the rest of the season. also want to thank Rick Finati, who went inside the huddle, the spotlight tonight, to uh, talk about St. Edward's big game coming up against Don Bosco Prep on Saturday. You can check out all the information and game previews on highschoolfootballamerica.com. Don't forget, plenty of games around the country tonight. Go to the website to get the scores as they come in. Our, we're the best source to keep you up to date throughout the season and let you know what your favorite team did. Want to thank our sponsors tonight, Blitz Group. Go to blitzgroupllc.com. They do all of our media strategy. The High School Rudy Awards. Go to highschoolrudyawards.com. You can nominate now. Come on, if you've got a good story out there, and we will have one of them next week, John Nemec from uh, Ohio, uh, Theodore Roosevelt High School, along with his nominee, Ryan Anderson. So that's next week on High School Football America. Also want to thank the National High School Coaches Association. Go to nhsca.com to learn how to become a member and learn more about the organization. I want to thank Corey back in Ohio for producing the show tonight, and that'll do it for me, Jeff Fisher, and I will talk to you next week. You've been listening to High School Football America. Catch it here every week, Thursday at 7 o'clock Eastern Time on the Artist First Radio Network. <laughs>